buy it or How's it going? I'm John Rail. And I'm Leah Morningstar, and you are watching Buy It or Burn It. The show where we present DVDs that I am selling on eBay for you to buy, and if you don't buy them, I burn them. In, in case this concept is, you know, a little complicated, why don't you check out the DVDs that didn't sell last week? Hey, and we're back after a slight, if not very long, absence. Explanation about that coming soon. In the meantime, let's discuss the DVDs that did not sell last week. Now, as some of you may or may not know, any DVDs we sell on eBay, a percentage of that goes to the Environmental Defense Fund because, let's be honest, burning DVDs, not so good for the environment. Now, first one up, this one, I'll admit, makes me a little sad, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised it didn't sell, although, as the joke of this entire series goes, what's the point of DVDs, you know? But we have the best of Christopher Walken on Saturday Night Live. Now, my usual joke about the best of SNL is that there is no best of Chris Rock, there is no best of Jimmy Fallon. Christopher Walken, there's a lot of best. There is a lot of good shit here, and I am, I am sorry to have to burn this. I really am. Next up, we have the fantastically depressing Million Dollar Baby. Now, I still love this film, even though the uh, final injury thing, the what happens that happens is uh, a little forced, you know, a little, uh, little, really? Is that, is that how she went down, really? But overall, fantastic movie. Although if you are gonna watch this, I'd recommend streaming it high definition. Have they done a 4K version of this yet? I don't know. But this is still a hell of a movie. And I gotta say, I, my fondest memory of this movie is taking my grandpa to go see it. And, and not only did he love the movie, but he absolutely loved that scene where Morgan Freeman knock the fuck out of that young trash talking kid. So I will always remember watching this in theaters with my grandpa. Now, I don't think I have felt quite as justified in burning something yet as I feel in burning Transporter 2 because it is a dumpster fire of a movie, although it, it knew it was. You know, which is kind of why Roger Ebert liked it. Like, Roger Ebert knew from the get-go that the Transporter series was trash. And so when Transporter 2 came out, he was like, oh, finally, they're, they're upfront and honest about being trash. You know, because, I mean, let's be honest, like a legitimate action film that takes itself seriously, it's not for Jason Statham. He is not in that great a shape. Like, he's, you know, he's a decently fit, middle-aged white dude, which apparently is what all action films are now, is real, not even middle-aged, like really old white dudes. I don't get it. Somebody explained that to me. But in the meantime, let's burn this hunk of dumpster fire. Hey, Mr. Bigelow, my ear comes. Aw, oh, much ado about nothing. Like, like many Brana productions, this is a hot mess of great moments and shitty moments. What were they thinking casting Keanu Reeves in anything Shakespearean? And what were they thinking casting Denzel Washington in anything Shakespearean? I mean, granted, there is a huge difference between those two actors, you know, one being Keanu Reeves, who a lot of people say he's a bad actor. That's, that's not accurate because he's not even trying. He doesn't even quite grasp the concept of acting. Whereas Denzel is a fantastic actor who just doesn't have any business in doing Shakespeare, which, funny enough, Brana has a history of not giving a fuck about that. I mean, have you seen his version of Hamlet with Jack Lemmon? Ugh. So anyways, uh, I, don't, I don't feel too bad about this one getting toasted because I don't recommend it. You know, I, I, I haven't even seen it and I would still recommend catching Joss Whedon's over this one. Okay, so that was some enjoyable arson. Leah, why don't you tell us uh, what do we got this week? 
What'd you pick out? These are some of my favorite movies that we have here, so I recommend buying all of these. We have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's oh, Stone. Who can forget that first Harry Potter? Like the awkward little kids who were kind of new to acting, but then they got really good. Yeah. And Chris Columbus was like the perfect, like, tasteless, generic filmmaker for this project. It's like he wasn't going to bring any opinion to it, so we could just have the story that we wanted to see on film. I like that hey, HP is remarkably well adjusted for a kid who suffered the amount of psychological abuse. Yeah, at the hands of he should his. be like a psychotic bully by now. He should but... really have a lot more problems, but he's really just a good kid wanting to make good, make some new pals. We got the follow-up to HP 1, HP what? 2. It's kind of like Chamber of Secrets. We love the first one so much. We're like, just do the same exact thing again. Exactly. Yeah. This is where the abuse of his childhood really starts to kick in. And HP at school starts hearing things in the walls, and he starts murdering people. <laughs> and everybody's really, even his best friends, Ron and Hermione, start to turn on him because they're just like, we know you were cool, but really that latent trauma. All right. When Harry met Sally. What? Because if you try long enough with someone who's totally uninterested in you, they'll eventually give in. Yeah. Because they'll be like, I'm aging. I really just want to like settle down. I'm too tired to like keep dating around. I know you're not going to cheat on me. This could be a thing. And if you refuse to watch Woody Allen movies like Annie Hall, yeah. this, is, this is your gold standard of romantic comedy. So just keep trying, everybody. Yeah. Even if, like, you know, they're not into you the first 20 years, just keep hanging out saying you're a friend. The first time I saw this as a kid, I was like, man, what is her problem the whole movie? And yeah. then, like, as an adult, I watch it, I'm like, oh, man, that guy is fucking clueless. Yeah, that guy's he a problem. He is destroying this poor woman. <laughs> we got Beauty and the Beast. It's My another good romantic. Favorite Disney movie. Yeah, mine Hands too. Hands down. This one lets you know. That romance, if you just get a girl, keep her locked up get somewhere. Get her. Is... Get her. Threaten her life. Threaten her father's life. Get her however you can. Just keep her locked up somewhere. Love and look how about... cute he is when he's all cleaned up. Right? Usually he's a beast, but this is he like brushed his beard and he mm. really tried to be a good guy here. So it's nice when they try to be a good guy. <laughs> while holding you hostage. They forgive us every time. Yeah. What do we got now? My final choice, Chasing Amy. Oh. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. Are you? Yeah. Wow. Well, maybe not anymore. You said that out loud on camera. I that's, know. That's that balls. was like, uh, let's say when I was like a kid. <laughs> You're a brave woman. I was like woman. a huge Kevin Smith fan. Is he in trouble for something too? No, 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 no. <laughs> Hashtag not me. He is not in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not Kevin Smith. Yeah. But Chasing Amy, I had this really foxy uh, teacher in school, mm. and he recommended I watch Chasing Amy when I was like 15, and I did not understand it at all. And like, I just thought Jason Lee's, I thought Jason Lee was so cute, and I was like, why doesn't the movie like follow Jason Lee? I'd be way more into that movie. See, I remember watching this when I was 15. I thought it was like genius. I thought it was like this <laughs> beautifully written, you know, story of love and understanding, and. And like as an adult, I'm like, wow, so lesbians just need deep dicking? Is that right, yeah. Like I mean, yeah, it's the... definitely maybe not, maybe it doesn't hold up anymore. But his dialogue is still like, you can tell this was written by Kevin Smith, a guy who has yeah. like almost no experience with women. And then it's just mad like, that this girl used to get laid. Yeah, like from a grown man perspective of like, <laughs> what do you mean you used to have boyfriends? Ah, right, exactly. thought I knew you. One time you fucked two dudes. And I was like, yeah, jeez, it was great. And then he's really mad and she teaches him that it's okay. Of course, maybe it's privilege. Not everybody lives in LA. Yeah, not everyone lives in LA. Yeah. It's like, oh, so that's the time they ran a train on you. You got really nice <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's pretend that you absolutely hate one of these movies and you're scared to death that somebody is actually going to buy it yeah. and cherish it. Oh, no. I'll tell you what you do you buy it, you set it on fire yourself, and you send me the video of that fire, and I'll put it on this show. Yeah. So buy it and set it on fire if you're like super anti-Ben Affleck and super pro just lesbians hooking up with each other and not guys. All right, well, thank you for joining us. And where can our lovely viewers find you? You can find me on Instagram at, at Leah Morningstar Life. Anyways, thanks for being here. Yeah, and thanks for having me, John. We'll see you guys later. Hey, I'm back from a somewhat lengthy absence. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I recently moved. Uh, yes, I left Hollywood. Now, I know what you're thinking. Usually when a filmmaker or actor leaves Hollywood, it's because they got sick of 
bartending to overpay for a small shitty apartment. And although at a time I was a bartender trying to pay for a moderately shitty apartment, um, the last couple years I had been happily working at a studio. But that studio recently closed its doors. So like Frodo clinging to the rock on Mount Doom, I was whisked away by the loving claws of another producer in Austin, Texas. And he's actually a guy a lot of you probably know, a pretty well-known skeptic by the name of Brian. No, not, not him, although I love collaborating with the Skeptoid. And remember, when you get a chance, change your Amazon Smile account to support this guy, because he does amazing work. No, a different producer, Brian. No, I said well-known. <laughs> Just kidding. People are still watching Mr. Deity, uh, but he is a notorious do-it-yourselfer, uh, which is why he requires $5,000 worth of equipment just for his remote controls. But he does it all by himself very well, so if you haven't subscribed to Mr. Deity, I'd say, you know, go over there and check him out. No, a well-known skeptic, Brian, who sees the value in collaboration. Mr. Hacking the System, Brian Brushwood. Mr. Scam Nation and Modern Rogue. Uh, he hit me up a few months ago and said, hey, you should just move to Austin and work with me. And I was like, um, I don't know. I mean, kind of a, kind of a Hollywood guy. But uh, then half of Hollywood started burning and my studio was shutting down. And I was like, you know what? This, this town seems to be telling me something. So I am now in Austin, Texas. So now I'm back. And I was not joking a while ago when I told you that me and my co-producer created a year's worth of content that we will now be releasing on a weekly basis. So feel free to share our stuff, sign up for our newsletter, swing by our Patreon, but no matter what you do or do not do, we are gonna be releasing something every single week. So enjoy. Thanks for watching. Oh, and obviously, if you are not already subscribed to Scam Nation or The Modern Rogue, which I don't understand how that's possible, swing by there and subscribe now, because they, and now I, make amazing things.